Hi again, we're back. It's been a while since we put up any videos, but here we are again, and we want to share with you another basic staple in the raw food diet. This you may have heard of, it's called sesame tahini. And the reason why it's important is because of all the nutrients that are packed in these sesame seeds. Um, Zuri and I did some research. You want to say hello to the people, Zuri? Oh. <laughs> we did some research and we felt that we'd add a new segment to our videos now whereby we're going to give you some information regarding the nutritional composition of some of the ingredients in our recipes. So Zuri's going to read the very first five of the ingredients in sesame seeds, which are the basic and main component of sesame tahini, which is basically a paste, a, a seed paste. So Zuri, will you read to, the, to our audience and let them know why it's so important to incorporate sesame tahini in their diet because of its nutritional benefits. What are those benefits? Uh, for, it's rich in minerals. It gives you vitamin B boost. So it gives you B1, B2, B15, B3, and B5. It gives you a calcium boost which is the best, the best provider of calcium. Okay, it's one of the best sources of calcium you'll find. Okay. Uh, has high vitamin E. Okay. And prevents, prevents anemia. Anemia. You can't read anemia, right? <laughs> okay. She has some crazy script for him. <laughs> it also has 20% of complete protein, making it a higher protein source than most other nuts. It helps to maintain healthy skin and muscle tone, and it's also easy on, on your digestive system because of its high alkaline mineral content, which is great for assisting in weight loss. I know that's good news. So we've done our research. We're going to put this aside now. I'm going to get busy with the recipe. So sesame tahini, like I said, is basically a sesame seed paste, and you use it in many, many ways in many recipes, especially in the raw food diet. You can use it for desserts to make them creamy, salad dressings to make those creamy as well. You can use it as, as a pate, recipes that call for any kind of a creamy, pasty texture. Or sauce. Or sauce, absolutely. And so you could probably even use it as a dip maybe. You could even use it for dips, absolutely. Zuri. So here we have sesame seeds. For those of you who are not familiar with sesame seeds, I'm going to open up the blender and let you see what it looks like. Want to give a hand, Zuri? Okay. Show them what raw sesame seeds look like. Now these are raw sesame seeds and what we've done is we've actually soaked them and then we've dehydrated them. Now you might ask why do we soak the seeds? Okay. You the soaking, well the soaking gets rid of the enzyme inhibitors. Correct. And, and what are enzyme inhibitors? Nature's way of protecting the nut and seed. Yeah, it makes the it makes the seeds or nuts harder. It right. gives them like a tough shell. Right. And stops them from growing without the correct like conditions, like a lot of sunlight, a lot of water. Mm -hmm. That's right. So basically, Zuri is correct. He said it's nature's way of protecting the nut and the seed until it actually has optimal an optimal environment, optimal conditions in order to grow, so that. See, uh, water and sun is what it will need to grow into an actual plant. And so they're healthier for you, they're more absorb, more absorbable, is that a word? <laughs> in, in your digestive system when you soak the seeds and remove the enzyme inhibitors, they're much more nutritious that way also because you're able to get all, of, your body's able to absorb all of the vitamins. Okay, so as I said, we've soaked these seeds and you, for sesame seeds, it takes about four hours to soak them. Each seed, depending on its density, will determine how long you soak them. You can go online and find charts that will actually tell you how long to soak your seeds depending on its density. So we soaked these uh, for a couple of hours and then we dehydrated them. So they're nice and dry and ready to go. What we're going to do, this is my Vitamix um, container for dry, to make flowers for dry goods. So it's a dry container. And we're going to put it here and we're going to actually blend this into a powder, okay? Looks more like 
cream than a flour. Looks more like a cream than a flour. Well, we do want a creamy consistency because we're going to add to it in oil. So we're going to take some of this out in this bowl so that you can see what's going on here. We do have an actual flour. So is, the all, is the only flour itself edible? Sure it is. This is so nice. Okay, so you can see it's kind of a grainy flour here. And what I'm going to do is uh, take some of this coconut oil that I've heated, and I heat it by way of the dehydrator. So you can take this and start pouring it in, and I'll stir a little at a time. You can actually do this with the spoon, okay? The reason why I'm going to do a little at a time is because we don't know how much we're going to need. Go ahead. It's kind of a relative thing. It doesn't really, um, we're not really measuring anything. I've just um, liquefied some coconut oil. You can stop for a minute. And we're going to stir it so we, until we get the consistency that we want. Now you want to make sure this paste is smooth and lump free. So you're just going to keep stirring and keep stirring. You want to put more? You have to. Let's put it in here. You don't have to? No, actually, you know what? Let's put a little bit of more than here. And you're going to really um, work this to your own preference. Now if you buy this in the store, if you buy this in the store, you're going to see that it comes in jars and not all of it. We're not going to do all of it, okay? We're okay. just doing this little bit to see how it works. So we need, we need some more. You buy this in the store, you're going to see it comes in a jar. That's good. And it will be a paste. It'll look like a peanut butter, only lighter. You see how it's much lighter than a peanut butter? So here we have the consistency we want. The thing with this is that over time, it actually gets thicker, or stiffer, I should say. So we can bottle this ourselves and, and you know, put it away, and it will become stiffer. Right now, you see it's pretty um, soft, and you, you, know, you can work with it. And creamy. And creamy. So we'll get out all the lumps, but it will become stiff. When you buy it in the stores, it's, you can stir. It's very, very, very stiff. And you actually have to stir it. You know, like when you, you know how you have peanut butter. Give it had fresh raw peanut, but you have to stir it because the oil will separate from the seed. Kind of like how when you ha get like those artificial drinks, like it all separates. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to shake it. You have to shake it. Yeah, but here we have natural product here. This, the oil is going to separate, and you're going to stir it. Now it's a little difficult to stir once it gets kind of coagulated and mm. and. Hard and pretty so, and thick and thick. So it's already thickening now. It's thickening now, absolutely. So and like I said, you can put as much of this if you want. We do have more in here, and we're just kind of playing around with it to get it to where we want it. And we may add more, we may not. And if we do add more, we may add some more of the coconut oil. So in any event, this is your sesame tahini. Now you'll see this used a lot in Mediterranean recipes. If any of you eat falafel, you buy them for lunch on the streets in a lot of the Greek restaurants, what have you, you will see, you will see advertised sesame tahini. And basically that's all it is, is a sesame seed paste. Many of the sesame tahinis that you find in the store are not raw. So that's why it's important that you they're do processed. It. Absolutely. And toasted. Most of the sesame seeds are toasted. And so it's important that if you want to stay, if you're going to be staying raw, you want to stay raw, you want to do it yourself, it's a very, very easy process as you can see. Sesame seeds and some coconut oil. The, the longest time that anything takes really is the soaking, which is up to four hours, and then dehydrating. And de dehydration doesn't take long either. So here we are, sesame tahini. You can use it for your desserts, pâtés, sauces, salad dressings, and dips. Thanks, we'll see you on part two of this when we show you what you can do with sesame tahini. See you next time. Bye.